Hello and welcome to Software Pulse Building Java Desktop Applications and I'm John McNeil. In this video we're going to take another look at logging, adding logging to your application. In previous videos I've used a product called Log4j version 2 and that's what we're going to continue to use here today but we are going to start with looking at the benefits of putting logging in your application. So what I have here is my jar file that I've exported, which we'll take a look at how we um, the code that goes in there in a while. I've got some external libraries, these two, which are my log4j2 libraries. You'll see the version 2.10.0 is the version I'm using. If you've got log4j, which is one point something or other, they're version one and they're not compatible. So you can't use, you have to change your code if you're going to use version one or version two. Um, version 2 obviously is the later version, more modern version, although um, I'm not sure how modern the version I'm using is. But anyway, that's something to watch out for. There's a lot of confusion. Um, people aren't always clear about whether they're using version 1 or version 2. So if you're looking for any help or things like that, make sure you're looking at help for the version you're actually using. So that's what's in our library. Um, in our resources file, we have got a log4j properties file and this allows us to configure what gets logged when our application runs and we'll come back and take a look at that in a second yeah so what we're going to do to run this application is we're going to open up a command prompt because this is a basic command line application there's nothing special about it it consists of two classes one class um, has the main method in and in that main method we create an object of the other type of class um, and then we exit um, but we'll take a look at that more in a minute. Let's just run our application. So I'm going to call my Java command, um, my Java executable. Uh, I'm using Java OpenJDK 11. I'm passing it the jar parameter, then the name of the jar file. Um, I don't need to do anything else. Everything else is taken care of for me. So I just press that. And you'll see that I've got um, this message here with some error. Um, and then I've got the start of our application, another object, the end of our application, which are just system out prompts. But what we have now got here is we've got a new file added to the bottom here called logs.log. And if we open that up and take a look at it, we'll see that we've got the same line as we had on our command prompt there because I've configured my logging properties file to say that log to the console and log to this file here. So there we are, that's just a simple error message log file I've put out to my log file. Now, the reason why you'd want to do any of this is because obviously you don't want to log lots of information when the application's out in the field. Bear in mind we're talking about desktop applications, so they're, they're packaged up and they're deployed onto people's machines. And once they're on people's machines, you have no visibility about what's going on. So if somebody should encounter a problem, what you can do is you can either, you can change this value here in this properties file. So at the moment I'm logging everything up to error level. If I go for everything up to info level and just save that. When we run this now, we'll find that our log file here, logs.log, will have some new values in it. Um, so, and we'll be able to, see here in in the console as well you can see we've still got the error message we had we've now got an information message there and we've got a warning message there and if i open up my log file you can see that too so what you can do is by introducing logging into your application you've got the ability to be able to capture what the user what path the user's taken through your code base when they encounter a problem so they can increase the logging level run the application when they see the problem they can stop they can then send you the log file and you can be able to um, you'll get an insight into what was going on in the application at the time providing of course that you put logging messages in that are meaningful and give you that sort of information so that's what that's one of the reasons why i use logging and, and why you may want to use logging if you're building an application where you don't necessarily have visibility on what the user is doing. Um, um, so 
and, and there are many products out there. I am using Log4j too, but there are many different products out there. You know, if you want to use logging, then maybe you want to take a look at um, using one of those logging problems um, to achieve what I've demonstrated here. So with that out of the way, let us go and take a look at the code. So I've got my log4j2 example program here and it's got two classes, a log test class and a class that's called another. So the log test class um, simply has a main method. Now there's no logging in here at all at the moment. I'm going to put the login in so you can see how, how that's done. And all it will do is it, um, it the main method um, does a system out then it creates this another object and it does another system out message so if I just run this pro oh, let's just have a look at another so the another class has a constructor um, that just does another system out message so when I run this I'll expect to see three messages this one at the top first then the one that was in this class here second and then finally this um, message there so let's press the button and see what we get and here we are, we can see we've got the start of our application, another object, the end of our application. So that done, what we need to do now is to add in some logging using log4j2 into our application. So the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to add the libraries, the log4j libraries, um, to my project. So I'm going to configure the build path of my project, and I'm going to add an external jar and I've got version 2.8 here as well but I'm using 2.10 here today so I will pick the core and the API I've downloaded these from the internet um, I'll provide a link to where they are um, in the comments below but um, yeah you download them as a package I think you get more than these two but you only need these two for this example here and then I'll apply and close so that's our library ready to use Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add this private static logger here. And you've got to import, so make sure, and here you can see, you see there's a Java util logging option there. Um, the one you want here is org Apache logging, I think. Okay. We'll soon find out whether that's the right one or not. So that's our logger. Um, by default, you can have logger run and it will simply write out some code um, to the default locations. And that works great if you're just running it in your IDE. But if we want to package it up and deploy it, if you want to be able to change values in a file, you can't have it wrapped up in your jar file. Hence, we had the resources folder sitting outside of our jar file with the configuration properties in there and the log file um, ran in the root of the directory of where the jar file was. Um, so what I'm explaining here is we had the, the properties file in this resources thing here which is outside of our, our jar file here and the logs was created at the same level as the, the jar file um, because you can't write to files that are inside the jar file. So you need those files to be sitting outside of your jar file. So this is why what we're doing here is we're going to set a system property. Um, if you set a system property log4j dot configuration file, when log4j is getting a logger, it will look for a configuration file in wherever you specify this, whatever location you specify. And I've specified resources forward slash log 4 2 properties so you can see my file is called log 4 properties you could have called this file anything there just make sure it matches over here so that then when we call our log manager let me just import that log manager there and get logger we will get the logger we'll set this variable to an instance of this logger and it will use the properties as defined over here. So now we're all good to start logging. So to start off with, I will just simply write an error message 
so there are various types of um, logger messages you can you can send um, so starting at one end so you've got you've got fatal you've got error you've got warning you've got information you've got debug and you've got trace um, so this one's an error and then at the bottom I will put a warning uh, I'm just using a simple um, string type of message there are different types of objects you can pass into these um, but for what we're doing we're just going to do a string okay so that's those now when we come to here we're going to do something slightly different with this um, class so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to set define the logger and set it all at the same time um, just using its class just using the class name so if you saw over here we defined it outside at the class level um, so we set a property at the class level and then we created and got an instance in our main method here we are just simply saying create me a static logger and just get the logger from this class and the reason why we can do that here and we didn't do it over here is because over here we needed first to tell it where to look for the properties file once we've set that up for this um, for this application all the other classes in this application are going to use the same properties file um, so you don't need to go through that again um, so the final thing we, the, the other type of logger we're going to demonstrate here is just an information message here so we save that and that's it that's our logging in you can put these logging messages wherever you want to put them wherever you need them um, and you can come up with a strategy or, or, or a technique that gives you insight into what's happening how you go about it is um, up to you you can do it any way you want I tend to do it I tend to have a um, an information message when I enter a method and when I exit a method just so I can trace which methods the the, the code has run through um, that's just what I do I mean you can do whatever you want so press run and right by default um, log4j will always put errors messages out to the console if there is no configuration file found now whilst we specified a configuration file here what I haven't done is in my resources file my resources file is um, my properties file sorry is empty so I've put all of this in for my properties file I'm not going to go through what each one of these lines explains this is more about how you would use the product um, I think the earlier video about log4j I tried to explain some of these these settings um, I guess the key things is it, it's a rolling um, file it will change its file every every so many minutes every five minutes it will create a new log file and if the size gets over one megabyte it will create a new mug a new log file um, it will log everything at info level or more severe um, and it will log everything that is in the the package software so my two applications are in software.app and software.app util so both of those are in the software package um, I could even go software.app and I would still get the same result so now if I run it um, let me just go over here and press F5 to refresh this project um, they're all previous log files from an earlier generation so let's just come back press F5 there so now when I run this one I expect the console to give me more information there we are we've got the error message we've got the information message and we've got the warning message in amongst our standard out messages and if we go over to here and press F5 again to refresh my project you'll see I've generated my logs.log .log code and in there are my three error messages so that's a quick example of why you'd want to add logging and how to do it so that it can work on something that you've wrapped up into a jar file and a quick demo on how to add logging into your application 
Um, you can just now add it for every class you build. You just do the same thing and then you call logging messages wherever you need. So hopefully that has given you an insight into how to do it and it's straightforward. Um, this has been Software Pulse, building Java desktop applications and I'm John McNeil.